I'm Pastor Bob Riggs, and at this point we're going to share some comments and some thoughts based on the section of Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to chapter 3, verse 20. And here again, I encourage you to read that whole section, and if you haven't done so yet, uh, the previous posting has me reading that whole section. It takes about eight minutes or so for that reading, and um, or you could just read it on your own. But once again, as we look at that scripture, uh, first off, I should share a few uh, where I'm at. I'm at my home in Carson City, uh, about 100 miles away from St. Paul and Hamburg. And um, b behind me, by the way, are some pictures from the first church that I served uh, way back in 1983. Uh, 1983 to 1986, I was oh, about three years and three months at my first call. And... Um, that church or, uh, gave us these gifts as we left uh, behind. There's a picture, a split rock lighthouse in uh, on the North Shore of the Lake Superior, which is where uh, we lived at that time. And over here, there's pictures of Gooseberry Falls, which was also very close there in northern Minnesota. Uh, we went from northern Minnesota after being there for about three years and three months uh, down to central Minnesota near a larger city. And uh, that's pretty similar to Pastor Burgess's uh, early ministry history. So uh, just kind of interesting in that sense. Uh, by the way, a number of folks ask about my uh, wonderful wife. Um, she is truly a great blessing to God, from God to me, and uh, thankful that uh, she in many ways is a blessing to others too. Um, what she's doing right now, um, she's in the basement um, making not quilts as she normally would, but she's making uh, face masks, homemade face masks for the local hospital. Uh, she got the guidelines of how to do that, and she's made about 30 of them so far, delivered them, and they were very grateful to receive them. And there's a number of people in the area that are making some homemade face masks to help with medical people that as supplies are short. Now, as everybody can do something with this uh, virus situation, uh, the one thing that we can all do is make sure that we minimize as much as possible the spreading of it. And for many of us, that simply means just staying out of staying at home as much as we're able to and uh, the good thing about being able to just stay at home so that we can limit the spread of the disease because after all whether or not I get it or you get it may or may not be that big of a deal but there are others that if they were to receive it and there again if we contribute to the spreading of this illness um, that would not be what we want of course uh, but we can all contribute to this situation by simply staying at home and what a wonderful time it is to be able to stay at home bring out our Bibles, and look at them together. And there again, as we look at Romans, maybe normally you'd quickly just look at a verse here or there. Uh, but since we got time, since we're at home, uh, why not take out your Bible and read every verse? And if you got questions or comments about it, uh, feel free to email me. Free, feel free to call my cell phone. Uh, if you need that information as far as my cell phone number or um, my email address, uh, call the church office or uh, you can uh, hope uh, there may not be somebody there come to think of it um, but um, you can uh, email the church website and uh, we'll uh, be sure to uh, be glad be wonderful it would be wonderful to hear from you and to be able to talk to uh, about Romans if you have any questions now as we look at this section uh, finally uh, this section deals with you could say the justice of God is God justly will someday give sin what sin deserves. And normally when we think of justice, we think of it as being something that's good. Uh, because there again, when you watch a television show and you see a bad guy uh, early in some sort of suspense show, it's kind of nice to know that in the end, this bad guy is not going to be successful. And in the end, the bad guy of a good action TV show, he's going to uh, face the punishment for his terrible crimes. Justice is a good thing. But when justice gets applied to us, well, it can be a very scary thing. And there again, that's the message of Romans. Uh, as St. Paul begins, he talks about the nature of sin and the fact that sin deserves God's wrath. You know, many times as Christians uh, and through the history of the church, different attributes of God sometimes get overlooked. As it, there's times in the history of the church where the love of God is overlooked, there's times in the history of the church where the justice of God and his just wrath is overlooked. But when we read in the scriptures, we see that God clearly is a God who is holy, who is just, and in his wrath will someday punish sin. 
And it's not just in this one section of Romans that we hear that message. It's throughout the New Testament. I had a sheet that I shared with the Bible study group once that made reference to the fact that some 23 out of the 27 books in the New Testament refer at one time or another to God's ultimate just wrath that will be seen with sin. And a couple of verses I'll share with you real quickly. Um, one of them is Ephesians 5, verses 6 and 7, where St. Paul says in Ephesians 5, 6 and 7, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them, St. Paul writes. In another scripture, Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Paul says there in Colossians 3, 5 and 6, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Now, there again, when things happen, people say, well, is this the wrath of God? Or is this virus the wrath of God? Are problems the wrath of God? Well, they are reminders of the fact that we're in a world that's been impacted by sin, but what scriptures were referring to is something far more serious, and it underlines again how much we have a need for a Savior. And as we have a need for a Savior, St. Paul's laying the foundation to be able ultimately to point to the salvation we have in Christ. But before seeing Jesus as the one who answers our need, Paul needs to make the point that we have a need. We all have this need. Now, as this is a longer section, in chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, as St. Paul talks about the wrath of God, he talks about the different signs of sin that can be seen in the world in which St. Paul lived. It can be seen in our own world today, of course. But I made note of the fact that the pronoun that St. Paul uses in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32 he uses the third person, plural, they or them or their, 26 times. That's how I counted them. And there again, you can do your own count and let me know if I'm off. But I counted 26 times that St. Paul referred to their sin, what they have done, what is ultimately coming to them. And St. Paul pointed to the nature of sin and God's just wrath. But the pronoun shifts beginning in chapter 2. Uh, beginning in chapter 2, he uses the pronoun you. Not a single time does the pronoun they or them appear in chapter 2. But the pronoun you appears some, actually it's 29 times. As I looked over at my notes, I think I said 20 at first. But actually it's 29 times that I counted that in chapter 2 he talks about you. Because while others might have their sin, you have yours too. I think that we've all heard that illustration before. That when I point to the sins of others, I have this accusing, pointing finger. But as this sin, as this finger points out other sins, there are these other fingers that are pointing back at me. And as we remember the fact that others have sinned, indeed, all of us have sinned. St. Paul, as he goes on into chapter 3, comes to a conclusion. He says, what then shall we say? What should we say? What should they say? What should you say? What should we all say? And what we all say, he comes to with a conclusion in verse 20. That by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Through the law, we become aware, knowledgeable of our sin. Now, in chapter 3, by the way, when he begins at verse 9 and says no one is righteous, from verse 9 to verse 18, he just has a series of Old Testament verses that he's quoting. And if you have a study Bible that makes note of that, you can uh, see the number of times that he makes reference to the Old Testament as he talks about this nature of sin. But there again, as he, in this section too, something in addition to the justice of God, the wrath of God, the sin that we've all committed, the judgment we all deserve. What else uh, St. Paul has already introduced is the idea of whether we are Jew or non-Jew, whatever our background is, this we all share in common. And again, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, as St. Paul says that the gospel is the power of God's salvation for all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, it's going to happen throughout this letter uh, 
that he's bringing together people who were of very different backgrounds. And it's very much one of the issues in the New Testament church, whether or not the people of God, as in the Old Testament, were the chosen covenant nation of Israel, uh, whether or not God continues to be the God only of that chosen covenant of Israel and a few others that would join them, or if the Lord came for all nations. That's part of the whole discussion there when he talks about the value of circumcision or uncircumcision. And when in chapter 3 at the beginning he says, what advantage then is there to being a Jew? Uh, he, of course, is making the point that it was a wonderful advantage that they could have a relationship with God in the Old Testament. It is a wonderful gift that God kept his Old Testament promises in sending through the nation of Israel his Savior, Christ Jesus, and truly is a gift of God when the message of salvation is shared with others and when others are also included in that kingdom. Uh, back when we did this study, uh, and there again on Sunday morning, we did uh, some looking at the sections of Romans already, and we'll get caught up pretty soon to where we left off on Sunday morning Bible study. But I made the point back with chapter 3 when he asked what advantages are to being a Jew that in a similar way, we could ask the question of what advantage is there to going to church? Because after all, it's not as if somebody is saved based on the number of times they go to church. And as we are not able to gather together as the people of God, it's not that we're any less the people of God at this moment. But still God has given gifts through his church. And that great greatest gift of all is a relationship with him. And he gives that relationship as he works through his instruments, his means of grace. His means of grace is God's word and God's sacrament. And while we're not saved because we go to church, what an incredible gift it is to be able to gather as the people of God, to share God's word, and to receive the strength that comes only through Christ in his sacrament. But what a gift it is, too, to remember that God's church is God's church, regardless of where it may be, whether it's able to gather or not, as we cling to the truth of Jesus, and as we're able to share God's word here, even at a time where we're not able to gather as we normally do, uh, but we are still the church of God, the people of God, making use of the word of God together. And in this word of God, I believe that St. Paul begins by striking down any hint of pride that someone might have. Any hint of looking at others and saying, oh, they are sinners, but I am righteous. Any hint of things that would separate us from one another, because maybe I know something that someone else doesn't know, what I need to know more than anything. I need grace. I need forgiveness. And it prepares me to receive the ultimate gift that God has for us in the forgiveness that we have in Jesus. With that thought in mind, let's share together a word of prayer. And once again, I invite you to uh, email the church uh, website if uh, you have questions or um, they'll pass on information about my personal uh, email. I think it might even be listed on the website. Um, or you're welcome to call me if you're able to. And um, if you have questions about anything that deals with Romans. Uh, let's share together a word of prayer. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, indeed, through your word, there is many gifts. And in, among those gifts is the knowledge of our sin. The knowledge of our sin is something that we might not at first see as a gift, but truly it humbles us. We pray that your spirit would be among us to give us the humility we need so that we can stand before you and one another on the firm foundation of grace. Truly, our sins deserve your wrath. We thank and praise you that you were willing to take on human flesh, to take upon yourself that wrath that our sin deserves. Strengthen us in our faith as we trust you in all things. We pray you be with our country during this uh, critical time that we currently face. We do thank you, though, that in our individual times, we have additional opportunity to be gathered around your word to reflect on its meaning for our lives. We pray you continue to bless us in our study together. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We'll look forward to the next session.